Welcome everyone to Women Who Write. This is a collaborative series embracing women who create and co-create in an industry that is evolving. We're here to raise the vibration as we explore the challenges and opportunities to rise together. I am here, Gila Nehemia, with Radha Nila. Radha Nila is a multimedia artist, coach, healer, teacher at Goddess Code Academy a mystical school for the divine feminine where she teaches her original healing modality called Goddess Activations. Radha is a founder of Radha Publishing House. Reach out to Radha Publishing for a connection call. Um, and the link is there below. Thank you. Thank you, Radha, for joining us today. Hello, Gila. It's such a pleasure. And I would like to just um, share with everyone your beautiful bio. So Gila is a divine feminine healer, writing empowerment coach, a poet, and a spiritual heart guide. Gila is the founder of Wild Writers Heal, where she coaches people to heal and share their stories in anthologies and personal publications. Contact her for a 15-minute chat to begin co-creating your next chapter. Oh, thank you so much. It's so lovely to be here. I love um, co-creating with you in this way. And today we're going to be talking about something um, important for women, I think, don't you? Yes, yes. We're going to be talking about sacred boundaries. I think it's really important for women, especially. And um, and yeah, I, I love what you have to say about this. So tell me how you feel about women and how, um, you know, what kind of boundaries do you think we need to, to have with each other and with ourselves? Absolutely. Well, I, you know, we were talking earlier that we're both, you know, empaths and, and healers and we, we support other people's journeys. And um, sometimes people think that that's something that you're available for 24 <laughs> seven, you know, <laughs> for, I've had friends tell me like, you're always a go-to person whenever I have a problem. And, and I'm like, well, that's not necessarily the role that I like to have. How about when you, when you're celebrating or having joy? Um, I think there's something to be said about having sacred boundaries because, you know, we're, we're creatrix and we, we're always creating something. And so sometimes we can't just have the, those call, kind of calls or, or, you know, we can't always be putting out the, the fire for everybody. Um, there, there's something called invisible work. And that is where, uh, you know, a woman is working all the time, but she's doing this invisible work in the background. And that's usually the woman who is, you know, what you consider like a good girl or trying to make things right or trying to smooth things out for everything and everyone. And that's a pretty, it's a pretty tough role because people don't understand that you're doing work behind the scenes to keep things flowing. But that doesn't mean that, you know, just because you're a healer and a coach that you should be taking on everyone's um, unsolicited, you know, issues that are outside of a session. Am I right? <laughs> yeah, no, totally. I think, I think it's a really an important topic um, because definitely as women, and I think as like natural healers, you know, creators, um, nurturers, you know, it, we feel that it's, um, I don't know how to say this, but we, we just feel this empathy, right? We said we're, you said we're empaths. And so we, we have this sensitivity and we want to help. Though I think that, um, or I feel that as we've both stepped into this role, like, you know, as, as healers, it's also important to, um, you know, that sacredness is, I think is important. Like how do we, how do we take care of our own energy as well as sharing the space with others when they're in pain? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How do we hold ourselves? Exactly. I think that's such a good, important question for all of us to ask. How do we hold ourselves in pain? Because we, we feel pain too. We feel, you know, we go through things and 
I, I personally um, like to just sit with my pain and um, feel it because I know that when I'm sitting in it, it's burning through something inside of me and it doesn't, it serves a purpose, you know, it, it's not something you want to just wash away as fast as you can, because then it might just come back because you haven't actually dealt with the core wound, whatever that is. Um, and so I, I would always say like, sit with it, sit with the pain, sit with the discomfort, sit with all of it and allow it to move through you. When you actually drop right into it into the center of it rather than trying to spin out of it there is something that actually shifts within you as a person so you don't have to just offload that right away to somebody else so you can actually hold that and alchemize it and learning that you too are an alchemist and it's possible for that to happen yeah, I think that's such an important um, tip and technique. And I, I feel like when I first started to do that also, it was really scary. Like it was really, it felt overwhelming. Like, can I really sit with this? Like, can, do, I, I felt like I, I, I wanted to give it to someone else, but I realized, you know, I had, I, I probably, I've done it probably a lot of times in my life, but like you said, like it just kept coming back. So, you know, it was really through a coach and it was really through my, my personal, like I had personal coaches that were helping me and, and they were there, but in, at the end of the day, I had to get over it, you know, like they were holding space for me and they were available. So I realized like when I sat with it and I just acknowledged it, you're right. I was able mm -hmm. to alchemize it. I was able to accept it and say, yes, yeah. this is a part of me. And I didn't push mm. it away, which really helped me to um, not feel bad about it. Uh, that's, that's a big one. That's beautiful because I think there's shame attached to negative emotions in our society. Mm -hmm. um, they're considered unacceptable like positive vibes only, you know, <laughs> and all <laughs> spiritual bypassing mm -hmm. that we have in our culture, so we don't have to deal with this stuff. But this is this is where the shadow work is really important to be with the darker, be with the darker aspects of ourselves, our emotions, and not to brush that under a rug or pretend it doesn't exist you know it, it's yeah it's important to just deal with it and I say like I always try to like look under the rug <laughs> like what's what am I not seeing here <laughs> I'm, I'm always curious like okay let's see what kind of shadows we have going on what's going on I, I'm curious because I want to see it I want to you know know what's going on so that it I can transmute it. And it's not like, you know, I, I want to integrate those darker aspects within myself so that they're not outside of myself or I don't have to demonize others in order to acknowledge my shadow. Um, it's, it's just incredible when we start to pull in these pieces that are forbidden or dark, you know, in, in the sense of like, you know, the negative side, the darker side and, the anger, the pain, the, the underbelly of the emotions that nobody wants to talk about and everyone wants to pretend it, it doesn't exist. Um, the sooner that we can get in touch with them, the less power they have over us when they do activate because they do, you know? Yeah, I, I like that. Um, I like everything you said. And, and, and you're right. You know, I think that we do demonize, we do, and we do give it power. And I feel like that's, that's a big part of the issue. You know, we're just like, we give it so much power and we, and we, and, and, and so what, what I realized, you know, like, even just kind of recently, at least consciously, that when I don't give it that power, 
And I realize it's just like any other thought, you know, yes, I might mm -hmm. have some pain. Yes. It might lead to some childhood memory. Yes. It may be a past life. You know, I go, I go down, I go down that rabbit hole. I, you know, I find out as much as I can um, through the modalities yeah. that I know or are working with a coach, how, however I, I get, get there. And I realize that, you know what, you know, I don't, I don't have to think that way anymore. So I think that only came with doing some massive healing. Mm -hmm. So wherever anybody mm -hmm. is who's listening to this, wherever you are, you are in whatever timeline you are, it's, it's all perfect. And know that, you know, you don't have to do this alone. And I think Radha and I both are sharing that, like, you know, so we need sometimes someone holding space for us until we can, mm -hmm. you know, hold ourselves in our pain. Sometimes we're not able to in the beginning. And it's important yeah. to acknowledge that too. Absolutely. I, I'm really grateful to, for space holders and, you know, I, I pay them because I value them mm -hmm. and I would rather do that with somebody professional than offload to a friend. You know what I mean? Right, so exactly. I think it, it, and, and, and I really value these people who, cause they've been trained and just like you and I, we've been trained in different modalities so we can hold space for others too but it has to be in a way that it's a gr an agreement right there has to be like a a sacred agreement like i will i will work with you and do sessions with you or i'll i'll hold i'll hold a container for you for you know whatever time three months and while we work together but there but there are sacred agreements that we have to come to in order to really hold the bigger space for someone else as well. And just like if we were to hire someone for three months to hold space for us, there's a sacred container and there's agreements and there's understandings. Um, you know, when I, when I do have clients that are for three or six months, like they do, they can email me, they can text me. And that's part of the agreement, you know, but there, there is a sacred agreement and there is an understanding that holding space is, is very sacred. And there, and also, you know, that, yeah, there is energy exchanges. When I hire someone, I pay them and, you know, just honoring that it's not something that you just offload to people randomly because then you're disturbing their psyches and, they're not prepared for it. You know, they might be in the middle of doing something. And so I would, I would always suggest like, before you just dump on somebody, make sure you do a check-in with yourself and um, sit with that as, as much as you can in really, you know, do the shamanic work of integrating and, and feeling it. And then when you feel ready, reach out to a professional you know, and that, I think that's just such a smoother road to take, don't you? Yeah, I totally agree with you. And um, one, because yes, this, that there is a sacred agreement that that is, you know, that person is going to hold the space for you and going to help you to integrate and accept all of who you are. You know, that if that's part of the agreement, you know, that's what they're going to do. It depends on who you're making the agreement with and what, what terms you both agree to. Though I feel that um, if you if we don't do that important step, um, it gets siphoned off into 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 places that don't actually help us. You know, like we're si either mm -hmm. we're you know or may maybe we're using someone else's energy to help us, but it ends up in the end recycling inside of ourselves. If you know what I mean, like it doesn't really get healed. <laughs> Mm hmm. Yeah, it's it's so true. How what you said, like you're siphoning someone's energy just to feel good in that moment, but you're not actually processing it, and therefore it's almost like it has to come back because it's true. Each person has to deal with it, and so you can't just offload emotions. You can do that, and then it's temporary. But the truth is to get to the deeper core of it, you really should talk to a professional rather than just a friend, you know, who is actually trained in helping to, for the full integration process. Otherwise, 
these things will continue to repeat over and over again. And you'll just be, you know, offloading to people and they have to carry that. And that's not, it's not fair. It's not right. And so we want to be conscious of that too, um, about these sacred boundaries. And we were talking about how they, how even like in relationships, like whether that be, you know, with our family member or a romantic partner, how there should also be sacred boundaries too with the emotions. Yeah, I think, I, you know, there's two parts to that because I feel like when we learn what that, what those sacred boundaries are, because many of us, you know, like I didn't know what they were for a very long time. So I let people like come in, come, you know, t- you know, like I would just, I had no boundaries, you know, <laughs> so first I had to put boundaries there. Um, and then when I started to do that, then it was, it was, it was easier to, to be in, in relationship with someone else though. Again, like, I think at least for me working with a coach, really helping me to, to really help accept all of me. Then I just really showed up for myself and my partner and, or, you know, family members, whoever it was, um, in a much more expansive way, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. because it's known like we, if we haven't healed our family, like our, you know, childhood family relationships, especially parental, it, it, it continues and um, comes up as triggers in our romantic relationships and even with our children. So I would definitely, definitely recommend anyone. Yeah. Who's having pain to like, like you said, take a look first, like take, do the assessment and then see what is really the next step for you because um, it's important work, which, which you just said earlier, like it's this invisible work that you're, that everyone's doing and we're not here mm-hmm. to do it alone. Absolutely. Yeah. You, we're not, we're not here to do it alone at all. And, and that's, that's the great part is that there are resources and there are people, so many people, um, Gila and I are both trained in this, in this work. And a lot of the work that I do with people who are writing the books is also to help them with their emotions, to help them clear their fears of visibility and stuff like that. And, and I know that's, that's the same for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so important. You know, it's, it's so scary to be sharing our stories uh, with people who we don't even know to know that it's going to be published in a book and someone can pick that up. And I think even yeah. be, even before we get to that point, even just getting into the story, you know, is like, it opens up a, a secret that we've never really delved into. Mm-hmm. And that's like kind of the first space. And then it goes, you know, this goes deeper, like, oh, okay, now I'm going to be talking about this. Oh, okay. Like, I, <laughs> you know, right. You know, like it's, it's, it's pretty deep, you know? It is deep. And that's one thing I actually love about the writing process. And I love to hold containers in this way because there is a sacred agreement. Um, people come in knowing that they're going to be stepping into this. I know it, they know it, we, we've made an agreement. And in that, in that agreement, they are in, unable to unravel a lot of the old restrictions or fears or traumas. But it, again, it's a sacred container. And then they're able to find their, their courage to share these experiences that are maybe out of the norm. And um, it's, it's a beautiful thing for me to witness. I, I love it. And I can imagine that you probably feel the same way about the process. And so that's the difference though, is that there was an agreement and there was a sacred container and in that space, so much is possible because we've set it up properly. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. It's total. They knew, they knew walking into it that something, something was going to be happening to them yeah. uh, because we made it clear, you know, we made it as yeah. clear as we could that this, this is the process. Are you in, you know, would you like to do it? It's, it's always, uh, there's always uh, a question and we ask permission on both yes. sides. Like, do, do you give me permission to do this work with you? And they also say yes. 
and and do you give me permission you know do i have your permission to um you know to help me to heal this you know it's like it's it's a both like it's that's why it's an agreement because we're both agreeing to something and we're both like you said earlier exchanging energies as part of this process yeah it's it's this it, it's so true it's like the informed consent we're being we're we're consenting, both consenting. I'm consent. We're consenting to be supportive to help through this process, and we understand how deep it can really, really go. And they're consenting to receive that support, and they're consenting to step into that container. So that that's the beautiful thing. And I just wanted to bring that to the awareness of our listeners that if you do want support, you know, feel free to reach out to us. Like it's that's what we're here for. But it's, it's when people are just like thinking that's okay to do every, an everyday situation because the container hasn't been set up. I, you know, I, you're, you're not prepared to just receive all of that information just at the convenience of others rather than under, having that understanding. So I, I felt like that was very important to clarify because as women, we're always doing that invisible work. And what that means is that we're always, um, taking these invisible threads and trying to smooth them out for people and situations. And we, we carry so much in, in, you know, and we take on so much and, you know, Gila and I, in this work, it's, it's pretty intensive, but it's, I think it's very rewarding, but being that we are already holding containers for, for people that have stepped into it, we can't hold, hold containers for everything and everyone. So we have to be sort of selective too. And that's just important to say as well. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. And, and I think that, you know, I know I used to do this and I know people who still do this of just like, Oh yeah, I'll just tell all of my friends that, you know, gather all of their advice and come to a conclusion. And, you know, and I'm not, I'm not judging anyone who's doing that. So what I am, I think we're both suggesting is when, when you actually work with someone who, you know, who you enter into a sacred agreement with, you're actually changing these patterns of, of validation and advice and stepping into your own wisdom. And I feel like that's mm-hmm. the difference from, you know, like who's to say, okay, I'm just going to hire a coach. I'm going to, you know, like we talked about earlier when we went before we came on, you know, psychologists used to just, you just listen, you just like dump you know, that was just like a dumping round. Okay. I'm going to dump all my emotions on you. I'm going to feel better and walk out the door, but that didn't actually help, help us. Right. Mm -hmm. We both have have done that and it wasn't, wasn't going anywhere. (laughs) So, you know, the the only reason we go somewhere is when we we're someone's holding space for us, helping us to integrate and actually helping us to access our own wisdom to really yes. solve our problems because it's a problem that we feel like, why are we in pain? Because we feel like we're having a problem or we're opening a wound that we don't know how to handle. The mm-hmm. when we can come to the awareness with the help of a professional, then we see on the inside what's going on. Yes, yes. And that's ultimately it. We want, you know, I think, the reason we do these, this work and the reason why I do this work is because I know that there's a transformation for the person where their own wisdom is activated, their own self-trust, right? They're re- reigniting that self-trust. And it's like they're, they're rooting down into their own feet, into the earth. And, and that's what brings me joy is like, yes, you can do this. Yes, you can write this yes you can be a published author you know and you can trust yourself and that is the most awesome experience to witness is when somebody comes in and they're really like nervous about it but then they realize wow this feels so good and so right and they have a greater trust within themselves because i think i could say you know i don't i don't i don't want to like have clients that are perpetually needing me like I want them to be so empowered within themselves that they can stand on their own two feet like that's the goal right that's that's the end game is like you don't always need to have a coach but you if when you do this work you become so self-empowered that you're able to now process on your own 
Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. And one of my, one of my coaches was totally like that. She said, like, after six months, you know, um, we finished our program and she was like, I, you cannot come to me like within a three month period, <laughs> you just can't come back to me, <laughs> you know, like, I want you to see how you can be on your own, you know, like, you know, it's like letting the, you know, letting your, your child fly, you know, like, okay, now it's your time to fly, you know, mm-hmm. I'll be in the wings though. I'm watching you, but you know mm-hmm. what? You're ready now. Um, and, and I, you know, I'm, I'm totally of that mindset as well. Cause I feel like when we can, when we can tap into that wisdom, when we can tap into that divinity that we know is there, that we've been hiding, that we've been resisting for so long, then, um, you know, then it's just, it's just going to come like as a, as a download, we're just going to know, we, like you just said, like we we're going to trust and have faith that whatever is coming through is actually the truth. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's beautiful. I love that coach. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, she was great. (laughs) She took me for three months after. (laughs) Well, that was some good experience right there. (laughs) Yeah, I was just like, what? You know, never had heard of that before. (laughs) And I started doing that too. I was like, you know, like, yeah, I, I six months, you know, three, six months, whatever sign if people sign up for, you know, that's it. Then like, take your time, you know, go, go do something yeah. else. If you feel like you want me, you know, I'm around, but, um, you know, as long as you've gone through those processes, then it's time to open your wings, you know, just like the, the whole, like you just said, the transformation, the whole, you know, from the cocoon for the butterfly, the whole metamorphosis, that's basically what's happening. Yes. And they have to practice flying on their own. It's beautiful. That that's what it's all about. And and so I, I love that because I've had you know authors in the first Awakening Star Seeds book, and then they took the second one off, and then they're going to be in the third because they felt like such a big shift, mm-hmm. and they needed that time to transform into the ne- their next level. And I, I was like, that's incredible because that's what it's all about. We are, we are all growing, you know, each one of us, each and every one of us, no one's exempt. Um, and we all need that time sometimes to, to really activate into the, like the newer part of ourselves. And in a weird way, it's like this time period feels like a, like a rebirth, a death and rebirth cycle that continues to happen for for us as individuals and for humanity itself. Yes, yes, it's it's very. Um, I wanted to use a. I mean, it's heavy. It's like because we're doing we're doing some like you said that invisible work. It's it is work, mm-hmm. and and it's really it's important work. And I think you're right. You know, and I think it's also like sometimes, especially when we're writing, sometimes we can't like I don't know about you and the deadlines, but you know, for this particular one we're doing. I'm a lot giving it the time it needs. And this is actually the yes. first time I'm not, I'm not so in this time constraint because I feel that when we're mm-hmm. doing healing work, especially the part of writing and processing and, you know, reflecting, there's a lot of pieces to that. And so mm-hmm. giving it, you know, giving it the, the appropriate time to do that and go on to the next step is necessary. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It is very necessary. The pro- the processing time, integration time, it's, um, it, it's big and it's much, much more than sometimes we expect it to be. Like um, I had gone to a wild woman retreat maybe two months ago and I feel like I'm still, you know, processing it because it was such a big initiation for me. Mm-hmm. And um kind of scary you know because it was very vulnerable I didn't know any of the women there was 45 women that came from all over and um we went through some sacred initiations that were um very cathartic and deep into this to to my cellular level and to my soul and I'm just so grateful for that but it's it was so impactful that it it's still rippling through me and I'm 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 excited because I can feel it and I can tell that it's still working through me, but I love it. And I know that, um, that that's part of the transformation that when we step into these 
experiences or containers, um, they have a very specific intention for them. And therefore we receive so much long after the, the session or the package or the um, retreat, whatever that is, um, we're still able to receive like on a very cellular level. It's like we're re um, mitigating our, our beliefs and, and, and certain aspects of our being. And it's like, I, I think it's so important to give us our, ourselves permission to transform constantly, you know, and then sit with that. And then of course it's going to continue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I completely agree with you. I, I think that, um, you know, it's all of these, all this, the, the retreat, all of these things are all about setting the intention having clear boundaries like this is where it ends and this is where my role is you know and I, I think that it, then it the, the clearer that it is the more mm -hmm. I feel we we get out of it yes absolutely yeah clarity and that's part of it the clarity the sacred boundaries it all it's all tied in together yeah it was it was really it's really been beautiful to talk about this with you and and to just share how, um, you know, what our processes are, what we've seen with the, with people that we've worked with and for, and, and for ourselves, how we went through it. Cause I feel like whoever's listening now and wherever you, you know, if you're, if you're, you're, you have some pain and you're, you know, you're just trying to understand it, you know, take that time, take whatever mm -hmm. time it needs for you to, you know, you're going to know what the next step is and, and to trust I'm it. So beautiful. Thank you so much, Gila. I'm, it's an honor to connect with you. Um, you you're, a, you're a woman that is rich in wisdom and I, I really enjoy uh, spending time with you. So thank you so much for having this conversation and thank you to our listeners for joining. Yes. Thank you, Radha, for being on this call with me and for sharing. And yes, thank you everyone. Um, until next time. Blessings. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.